All right, and they'll come out in any kind of conditions to see this one. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. We hope it's been a great day and that you're full of turkey and very warm because there are about 79,000 here who are not. But they wouldn't miss this night for all the turkey that you could have on any upcoming Thanksgiving day. Mike Godfrey joins me on the telecast tonight. The Cotton Bowl is up for, uh, for grabs in this one. Also, bragging rights in the state of Texas. But the question everybody has, the Aggies are huge favorites. Do the Longhorns have an opportunity? Can they win this football game? Well, first of all, Ron, Texas A&M is almost unbeatable here at home. Since 1985, they're 49-3-1, so it's very difficult to beat them here. In Texas's four losses, there have been three constants that they'll have to avoid tonight. First of all, Shane Rents can't throw interceptions. They had 10 in their four losses. They have to run the football. They've had less than 150 yards in the, against the four opponents they've lost to, and they must stop the run. The teams that beat them have averaged over four point yards, uh, seven yards rushing. I didn't get a yes, but I think maybe I got a maybe from you. So then will you give me a formula for success if Texas is going to win this one tonight? In a big rivalry, you always have a chance to win. First of all, that. Texas has to take the pressure off of Shane Renz. He can't be put in situations early where he has to win the game. And to take the pressure off of him, number two, they have to get running back Phil Brown involved. Traps up inside against the hard-pressing uh, defensive line of AM, short passes to him out of the backfield. Then you hit Lavelle Pinckney, who's six foot five. Try to get him in formations where he goes against 5'8 Ray Mickens, one on one, one on one, and then take your shot for the home run. They have to slow down AM's running game. AM will try to pound them and try to control the clock. And fourth, play to the weather. Two quarters where you're going to have the wind at your back, and also field position is big. Well, actually, Mike has kind of tipped our hand here. As far as the weather is concerned, Adrian Karsten is not on the field. Just how bad is it down there, Adrian? Well, Ron, what's known as a norther in this part of the country becomes an equalizing factor in the game tonight. This mist is expected to become a freezing rain, and the wind right now gusting up to over 25 miles per hour. Now, as Coach said, it means one thing for the coaches, basically two quarters to score their points while the wind is at their back. Special teams, hey, a and owns the number one punt return and kickoff return men in college football, but because of the wind, their talents could be taken right out of this game, Ron. Okay, Adrian. There you take a look at John Makovic, second year in Texas, 11-9-1. This season, his ball club is 5-4-1. And, and across the way, R.C. Slocum, his fifth year as the head man here in Aggieland, and a winning percentage of very close to 81%. The Aggies did win the toss as Venetulius has the ball teed up. And as R.C. Slocum told us yesterday, with this wind, the way it is blowing, he wants to put it behind his defense's back and let them play. Michael Adams from two yards deep will return it. And now the starting lineups brought to you by McDonald's. As Mike said, the man who has to have the steady hand, not necessarily a hot hand, is Shea Moritz. The wide receivers, you got a glimpse of him just a second ago. Mike Adams is the big play guy, extremely versatile. And on the offensive front, Blake Brockemeyer will be working against the All-American Sam Adams. That's a, a matchup that we will keep a very close eye on this evening. Ron, crowd noise will be a factor for the young quarterback, Shea Morenz. Jackson, straight up the middle has five yards and he'll take it to the 25 and these are the starters on defense I mentioned Sam Adams he's one of the finalists for the Lombardi Award this year the linebackers very active Steve Solari they need big plays out of him this evening and in the secondary everybody's all American at the corner spot Aaron Glenn in fact the last two times that he has been on ESPN he has had an interception for a touchdown Lorenz with the first pass of the night. Right over the middle, throws it complete. Ball comes loose, and they will say that the play is dead as Phil Brown on the receiving end at the 27. Ron, I think they're going to give him the completion, and we talked earlier about this noise. 79,000 people. You're 19 years old. Shea Morenz, you're a redshirt freshman. The key for him tonight is to be able to check off at the line of scrimmage. He has to be able to get his team out of some bad plays, so he has to maintain poise.
Third down. They go with the draw play. Pursued in the backfield. Phil Brown going to be tripped up. And from where he bounced, Mike, he will be about a half yard shy. And it was Sam Adams who got a hand on him. But I like the play calling in the first series. There, you're about a half a yard short. But they didn't put Shane Morenz in a tough situation. Little short pass. And here's the quick trap up inside. You see Sam Adams, number 95, just beats the block and is able to get to Phil Brown. But I like the way John Makovic started offensively. Mike, here to me is the most important thing of the football game, particularly early. And that is the punting. Dwayne Vasek and kicking into this breeze that is gusting up to 30 miles an hour. Aggies with a 10-man rush. They come after him. And here you see the result of the win. That thing is going nowhere. It will go out of bounds at the 45-yard line. It's only a 26-yard kick. Now let's take a look at the starters on offense for Texas A&M. Craig Hill, one of three very, very talented tailbacks, but Hill is the man who will get the call to start it tonight. The wide receivers, Tony Harrison. Big play all over this guy. Number three, he's out of Houston, Texas. And on a veteran offensive line, Chris Dawson is the leader there. Number 68, a senior out of San Antonio, Texas. Straight up the middle, and this is Thomas who gets the handle. As two of the tailbacks start, it is Thomas starting at fullback, and number 27, Greg Hill, at the tailback position. Defensively, for the Texas Longhorns, from their customary 4-3, Tony Brackens from Fairfield, Texas. He is straight out of high school, one of a number of youngsters played by John Makovic tonight. The linebackers, they'll need a big game out of Brackens tonight. Winford Tubbs, the senior All-American in the middle, also out of Fairfield, and in the secondary. A freshman out of high school, Bryant Westbrook. They need a big one out of him. Pulling to throw for the first time tonight. Pumps it. Has it in the flat. It is complete to Rodney Thomas, and he will have the initial first down of the night. Ron, what Texas A&M did on the last play is they brought all three of their outstanding tailbacks in the ball game and lined them up in a split T. Now, this is for the alumni. When you have three great backs, everybody's always asking how you get the ball to them. Well, you put them all three in the lineup at the same time. The only thing you don't want is you don't want your recruits to see that, especially wide receiver recruits. Well, there you can see number 34, Leland McElroy, the redshirt freshman out of Beaumont Central, and just what Mike is talking about, the fact that they can and will put all three on the field at the same time this evening. Blitz coming up the middle. Pass is knocked away and incomplete at the 37-yard line. It was intended for short, and Robert Reed had the cover for Texas. When you have a weather condition like tonight, you're going to have two quarters with the wind at your back. Corey Pulling and Texas A&M offensive coordinator Bob Toledo have to throw the ball deep when they have the wind at their back. Now, control the ball with the short passing game, but take your shots with the wind. No score, early going, first quarter. Draw play, Hill squirts to one tackler. Then is going to be hit 16, Chris Carter, another high school freshman. He is from Tyler, John Tyler, who is coming up to make the stop. And it will be third down for the Aggies, and they need the 34-yard line to pick up the first. Well, Ron, you talked about the three running backs, Greg Hill, Rodney Thomas, Leland McElroy. Leon Fuller says all three can make three or four yards after contact. He said that there's no team in the country has three good backs like these three. Hill and Cliff Gross this time. Gross in at fullback. He's a junior out of AM Consolidated. Pressure on Pullet. Going to be hit. Breaks off a tackle and then goes down. Robert Reed, number 40, the sophomore out of Converse, Texas, just outside of San Antonio, with the sack. Very important series for Leon Fuller in the Texas defense because we talk about wind and, and it just can't emphasize enough what a factor it is in this football game. And to give Texas AM field position the first series at the 50 yard line and your defense hold is a big confidence builder for this Texas football team. Mike Adams number 83 back in a single safety and with this wind behind the punter James Bennett I don't know if he'll ever get an opportunity to recover or to return one Mike from from this field location because of the breeze. Off 
the side of his foot. Takes an Aggie bounce now inside the 10, and that thing is going to go dead at the one-yard line. Forty-two yards and a kick that wound up bouncing in the A&M direction. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of CFA Thursday Night Football is brought to you by GMC Truck, the strength of experience. And by John Hancock, official life insurance sponsor of the 1994-1996 U.S. Olympic teams. Thanksgiving night in College Station, Texas. The 100th meeting between these two great universities, Ron Franklin with Mike Gottfried and also Adrian Karsten. And Mike, you talk about turning a pig's ear into uh, a silk purse. I mean, that kick was a horrible kick off the side of his foot. Look where it wound up. Wind in the bounce, but it's important for Texas to get this ball out of here and get a couple first downs. Moran straight ahead with the handoff, and it'll be Phil Brown, who may get one. Jason Atkinson, the senior out of Houston Westfield, number 43, steps up to make the hit. Ron Shea Moran's 19 years old, facing the 79,000 in the stadium, and of course the wrecking crew defense. In his last 58 passes, he's thrown five interceptions. If he's had a problem this year, it's been an interception bug. He's thrown 18 this season. play again. Jackson hit at the one. He will have nothing. Antonio Shorter is the man who is there to make the stop on him. And now, Mike, a third down situation. When you're backed up, wind in your face, Texas A&M will play the run. Curtis Jackson, number 39, tries to bounce it outside. When you're down inside the one, you want to run it straight up the football field, not try to bounce it because the chances of a safety are always there. Locks it on top. Adams pushed on the play and no flag. John Makovic elected to try to go deep to Michael Adams. Not a bad call. Had one-on-one -on -one versus Ray Mickens. Now the problem, Ron, is for the punting team. Well, the ball is going to be snapped from the one-and-a-half-yard line have to get it away quick because you're not at your normal depth as a punter. Vasek waits for the snap. That's a good one from Palmera. And here's his kick. And look, the wind just kills it. And I am amazed that they let it bounce. It will only cost them about seven or eight yards, but it is out to the 38. And let's take a timeout. No score, but the Aggies with great field position. We'll be right back. You can see these new movies. No score with 8.36 left in this opening quarter. And some of the folks that have come here tonight, <laughs> they are bundled up with everything they can get a hold of tonight. It is extremely cold. The wind chill factor in single digits. Ron, this is an excellent time to try to run a middle screen because Texas is trying to blitz the last two plays or go deep. They go to the running play in the hill with a big opening over the middle. Has five, has ten, count it off at the 11. As Chris Carter will come up to make the tackle on him. And Dawson with a paving block on the play. One of the strong points this Texas A&M offense is the big offensive line. See Chris Dawson in the center who's 268, six foot four. Calvin Collins, the right guard, 6'3", 288. Big size leading the way for Greg Hill. Butts one down. Again, a 10-yard gain. Carter holding on for dear life, and he's going to wind up with, let's see, it'll spot him out of bounds at around the 18-yard line, so it's a gain of close to 10 on that one again. That's the problem the Texas defense has had all year. They have not been able to stop the run. Texas A&M on the other side will pound you. They'll keep running the football, try to pound you. Greg Hill's reached 2,000 rush yards faster than any other Southwest Conference back and then try to play action, Yaron, after they pound you for a while. 
And Mike, on a night like this evening where the wind is supposed, is supposed to gust up to 30 miles an hour, if there is a constant in this ball game that Bob Toledo might work with, and that is the fact with those three tailbacks, he might run the ball 60 times tonight and be safe with it. It will become a running game for him, and if John Makovic on the Texas sideline, he has to look at the clock and say, run, clock, run. Eight minutes, eight seconds to go in this quarter. goes to Hill. Cuts behind one of his blockers. Got to have three yards in the play and Kevin Wattler, number 47, comes over to make the stop. Wattler injured an arch early on in the season and they really missed him and Mike, they have realized in the last three games since he has been back and almost 100% of what a huge thing that they have missed the entire year as far as output defense. You're right. There are different defense with Kevin Wattler in there. He brings experience to this defense. Wattler was our player of the game, in fact, in that big game against the University of Houston about three Thursday nights ago. Reverse to Harrison. Will not make it to the 10-yard line. He's got to be tackled just before he gets to the 12. And defensively, Robert Reed is there to make the stop, along with number one, Norman Watkins. Ron, you can't play a reverse any better than Robert Reed. Number 40 will play this reverse. Right from the snap of the ball, Robert Reed is being blocked. You're going to see him come into your picture. There's Norman Watkins coming off, then Robert Reed late on the tackle. Norman Watkins with a good play. Number one, Norman Watkins sheds off the block. Now he'll get help from Robert Reed to stop the reverse of Texas A&M. Third down for the Aggies, and the line to make is the eight. from the backside, Rick fumbles the ball. Nope, holds on to it. I beg your pardon. I thought he came loose of it. It was Wattler who came across to hit him. They had the middle screen on. Texas A&M had the middle screen, and the middle screen was open. Because of the blitzing of Texas in the defense, Kevin Wattler, number 47, is going to blitz, but Corey Pulling never had time he did to lose get that rid ball, of the football. Mike. He did lose the ball. Bounced but right back to him. Right through Wattler's arms, and now Vinatulius to attempt a field goal of 45 yards. This would equal his longest. Wind at his back, has the distance, does not have the accuracy, and let's take a timeout. 5.53 left in the opening quarter. A&M nothing, and Texas nothing. Well, the CFA special Friday afternoon tomorrow. Number three, West Virginia at number 11, Boston College. Both teams coming off arguably their biggest wins in history. Boston College shocked Notre Dame, as you know, and West Virginia defeated Miami. So tomorrow, it is West Virginia and Boston College, 4 o'clock Eastern time, right here on ESPN. And Mike, what a huge stop for the Texas defense. Big confidence builder for this Texas football team. They keep looking at the clock. They want to get this quarter over with so they can get the win. Lorenz in a short drop to throw. Just throws this one away. Brown is the man he was looking for, and he just tossed it in the stands. Mike Adams, or let's make it Sam Adams, was the man closest to the quarterback and putting on the pressure. John Makovic clearly is trying to settle the young quarterback down early with some short passes, play the running game, try to take advantage of the front of Texas A&M coming hard up the football field. You know, something else that could be very important, early points, just because of a weather cast I've just been handed. We'll talk more about it. Drop play. Bill Brown fights it close to the 35 as Junior White comes over to make the stop. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, weather, very important factor, but something else is the noise down here. There are an additional 3,000 seats right on the field during the Longhorns' last offensive series, and they're backed up to the goal line here. No more than three to four yards behind their offensive huddle. Two things. Morenz had to call the play three times, even with hand signals inside the huddle. Plus, these guys are really cold. The wind is blowing down here. They're not warmed up very well, Ron. 
Well, it's very difficult to, to, to get warm or to stay warm anywhere here this evening. Third down, and they need the 37. And the shotgun, Moran. Ball is tipped and incomplete at the 40-yard line. Eric England is the man who got a hand on it. We were sitting with Daryl Royal the other day in the press box, Ron. You and I watching Texas practice, and he pointed out that Shane Moran's a little slow getting rid of the ball, but one of the problems he has is he pats the football before he throws it and gives you time to break on the football. Eric England, number 92 with the deflection. Aaron Glenn is the deep man as Dwayne Bosick will kick for the third time. This is the third straight series of three downs and out for Texas. They have yet to pick up a first down. Good kick into the wind this time. Glenn at the 27 calls for the fair catch and makes it. Ron, if I'm Bob Toledo right now, the offensive coordinator, I'm going to try to go deep. All right, Mike, let me make the point that I was alluding to a moment ago. This weather cast we have just been handed here says we got an overrunning pattern, which means moisture overrunning Arctic air. We're looking for below freezing, freezing drizzle, and we may have sleet in the second half. So if the footing turns sour, whoever scores first in the second half or in the first half of play, it could go a long way as far as winning this football game. Big advantage, but I think Bob Toledo still has to use this 455 with the win to try to air one out against this Texas defense. Thomas, the lone setback behind him, gets the handoff. Thomas will get two, three tough yards as Tony Bracken, number 98. The freshman out of high school, Fairfield, Texas, is there to make the tackle. You know, it's interesting. When we were over at Texas on Tuesday watching practice, the confidence of the players, uh, watching them practice, then listening to them talk after the ball game, they talk very confidently about coming in here and winning the football game. They cannot afford any mistakes. They have to cause some turnovers against AM. Blitz from the outside. It is Hill with the football. Winford Tubb stands high in the hole, and he will knock him down after a gain of a yard and a half, and now it's going to be third down. Talking to Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator, about Winford Tubbs. Here's a player, Ron, that missed all spring practice, missed early fall practice, and Leon Fuller believes now he's finally coming into the player that he felt like he would play. Uh, having a good end of the season because he missed all that practice. Had that a very severe laceration of his wrist, trying to open a window in his apartment. His hand slipped off and went through the glass. It severed a tendon. He's lucky to still be playing. Dumps it out of the backfield. McElroy, and he will have the a and first down as Thomas gets outside to make the tackle. But of all three, the tailbacks, a couple of juniors and a redshirt freshman, McElroy seems to be the one that makes the most happen. Well, Ron, Texas plays a lot of man coverage. Texas A&M decides on this play to both put both receivers into the short side of the field. Now they're going to work Leland McElroy out of the backfield along with the tight end. Now Leland McElroy will be defended to the wide side of the field with a lot of room by a linebacker. Good call by Bob Toledo. But it rolls the pocket for the, oh my goodness. If he had had Thomas catch the football there, Tubbs was a half step behind him, and there were not many folks downfield. Same situation. When you blitz and you play man coverage, Winford Tubbs is going to be against Rodney Thomas, the running back. Has to cover him out of the backfield. And when you have crossing action, like on the last play, sometimes it will hold the middle linebacker just a step, and he's beat. Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator. Clock stops at three minutes and 27 seconds left to go in his opening quarter. And I mean, now the wind is just gaining here at College Station. Ten. Good time for a gimmick play. Good time to throw deep. Or a timeout. And that's what Corey Pulliga has just done as he turns and looks as though he might even be fussing with Hill a little bit. Let's take a break. We'll be right back.
Bob. Yeah. Why are we wearing this reindeer suit? Uh, to show everyone that CompUSA is a fun and festive place to shop. We're sure you can choose from more than 5,000 computer gifts. Yeah, like these IBM PS1 personal computers. Affordable, powerful, and expandable with a fax modem and preloaded with lots of great software. And Bob, IBM PS1 models feature the new smart energy system, so they're all energy-saving green machines. And is it true that CompUSA has a low price guarantee? Would you be asking that if they didn't? Oh, that's a good point. Thank it's you. a very good point. Hey, stop that. It's a timepiece. It's a breast spray. The new breast spray 9000. While some watchmakers brag about their new inventions, Loris creates practical watches like the Vector, a digital compass built into a precision chronograph. Stick with Loris, the only time worth keeping. Park this under the tree. Corvette backed by Eureka. Raw power for home or auto. Ten tools included for big jobs, tight spots, extra long cord. Corvette backed, a great gift by Eureka. They are more precious than gold. So eat it in the honey. They are more precious than gold. They make wine. With three hours of breathtaking picture and sound on a single tape, an instant playback at the touch of a button, nothing portrays the moments that color our lives like a Sony Handycam camcorder. It's your life. Isn't it worth a Sony? Three minutes and 27 seconds left in this opening quarter and no score from College Station. And some of the faithful who have uh, come over this evening uh, cheering for the burnt orange. Corey Pulig. Now with second down Aggie. Second and ten. Blitz coming from the backside. That's Watler. He steps up into the pocket. Hit by Stoney Clark. And is going to be knocked down for a loss. And that is the second sack, third sack, I beg your pardon, of uh, Pulling so far tonight. Corey Pulling looked like he tried to step up a little too soon in the pocket. Here's the play action fake, but again the blitz by the University of Texas. Stoney Clark, number 93, Kevin Watler, number 47, in on the play. Good pressure. You see Corey Pulling step up, just can't get the ball off against the pressure of the Texas defense. Tony Clark is a sophomore out of Gladewater, Texas, 6'1", 320 pounds. Pulling. Pressure coming from up the middle. Gets by one, gets by two, and he will come out of bounds on the near sideline at the 45-yard line. And it's Brian Johnson, number 13, out of Jersey Village, who was putting on the pressure. And there was a flag down, Mike, at the 45. Against a and a personal foul. Ron, you're always in a rivalry game. You know, big plays. You worry about penalties because the tempers of the players because they've waited for this game 365 days. Texas was beaten last year. Texas A&M did the dance on Bebo in the middle of the field. Foul was a dead ball, personal foul, hit out of bounds. You worry about the intensity of your players, and you talk to them about it, but you can't take the fight out of your players. Uh, there you see the hit. Norman Watkins got taken out of the play after he had taken a couple of steps out of bounds, and that's the reason for the marker. Most Michael Im Adams. Sorry. Most important thing for Michael Adams is he has to handle this football because you see earlier what the bounce did put him in bad field position he has to make the catch on this punt Adams from the 30 far side at the 40 hit from behind and stopped at the 29 yard line by Steve Kenny excellent block by Van Malone number eight sets us up the wind at your back, you get a good punt off. Michael Adams, who's a very dangerous player, reminds a lot of people of Eric Metcalf, the former Texas Longhorn. He's going to pick up a big block by number eight, Van Malone. And now, Ron, good field position for this Texas offense. 41 yards on the return by Adams. Two minutes, 20 seconds left in this opening quarter. And the Aggies are up 
in Mavs. I don't see how Morenz can possibly hear the signals with this amount of noise. They are really whooping it up. Gonna go long, deep over the middle. Pinkney is there. Incomplete, knocked away, eight yards deep for the end zone. Aaron Glenn and Junior White in the coverage, and it appeared momentarily as though Pinckney might have had the ball. Well, the six foot five receiver, 234 pounds. Shea Moran sprints to the left side of the field. Then he'll throw back to, to Lavelle Pinckney. Lavelle Pinckney on the post pattern, but he's being doubled by Aaron Glenn, number 31, Junior White, number five. Aaron Glenn, number 31, with a good job of trying to knock Lavelle Pinckney's hands away. Junior White, the second man in, you're right, Mike, is the man who caused the ball to come loose. Reverse, it's Adams, gets a block, Atkinson gets turned to flip, and Adams will take it to the 21-yard line. Hendricks is there defensively. Blake Brockermeyer, number 78, with the block again that will spring Michael Adams. Keep your eye on the right tackle, 78. Starts down inside. Now you're going to see him come up and make the block right there on number 43, Jason Atkinson, on the reverse. Ron, I think if you're Texas here, you take two plays to get this first down because of the win situation. Third down and two. Bounces to the outside, has the first down, plus an extra 10. It is first and goal, Texas. Mickens defensively. Ron, this is the player that John Makovic has to get off the mark. We talked about it earlier. Phil Brown, number 29. See the ability he has. He just stopped the defense because they thought he was going to go inside. Then he was able to stop on a dime start again. Ray Mickens makes the tackle number 24. But Phil Brown can hurt you three different ways. Running the football, blocking, and he's an excellent receiver on the backfield. That's the initial first down by Texas in this opening quarter. Two minutes left to play. Brown at the five. Spins off the tackler down to the four. Sam Adams is down at the bottom of the step. This defense of Texas A&M has been so dominating this year, there's only been two touchdowns scored against the Texas A&M defense. SMU late in the ball game in Louisville scored a touchdown against them. Texas has a chance to put the third one on the board. Bounced it inside, back out, and then cut it up. And he wound up with positive yards, but they're going to spot him down at the three, and it'll be a third down for the Longhorns. In this area of the field is two down territory when you're on the three yard line against this AM defense. You also have the ability of Lavelle Pinkney on the outside with his size. Versus Ray Mickens, 5'8". You got a 6'5 receiver, and it's a 5'8 corner on the outside. They drop. Pinkney knocked away. Mickens with the cover. Ron, they had exactly what they wanted. The Longhorns had Lavelle Pinkney and 6'5". But Ray Mickens, the little 5'8 corner, you know, he told his team the other day of paper, he said, I can cover Michael Irvin of the Cowboys. And the, the other player said they, they're not so sure he can't. He just has so much confidence in himself. You just see him fight Lavelle Pinckney for the football. Scott Charady to attempt this field goal of 20 yards. Chad Lucas the holder. Kick is up, and he's got it. So, 35 seconds left to play in the opening quarter. 
And the Texas Longhorns with a couple of things. They pick up their initial first down of the evening, and they kick the field goal to go in front three to nothing. Adrian, what do you have for us? Ron, Texas has a lot of confidence behind his bench over here. They went into this game, and the coaches told me, look, if we can win this first quarter, even if we don't score any points, don't let AM because... We can win it on emotion, but later on, talent of Texas A&M is going to take over. And now they're so confident they feel they've literally done it going into the win against the grain. Well, it's, it's, it's an awfully good point. In fact, Mike and I were talking at the meeting this morning, Adrian, about how early on in this football game it had become so very big in recent years. And it had been A&M who had been grabbing the momentum early and therefore grabbing the football game away. So much confidence in the fact that you've kept... Texas A&M from scoring with the wind that they're back for 35 seconds. But the other thing, I think John McAvick's done a great job in the first quarter of taking the pressure off the 19-year-old quarterback, Shea Morenz. Now let him play. Now he'll have the quarter with the wind at his back. Now you try to air it out to Michael Adams and Lavelle Pinkney. Mitchell and McElroy go back in a dual safety. Good look at McElroy there, number 34. As we said, he is a redshirt freshman. Corps of Cadets here at College Station on this cold evening. Last night was bonfire night. This is a tradition-rich series for both schools. On the ground. Slip, ball. Ball is touched and then knocked out of bounds. And Detron Smith, it's a good thing that he played heads up. That ball was very much alive. Well, don't forget this Saturday, there's more college football here on ESPN at 4 o'clock. It's bowl qualifying game for LSU as they take on the Arkansas Razorbacks in Baton Rouge. After the Residence Inn scoreboard show, number nine Miami looks to improve its bowl position against Memphis State at 7.30. Another Saturday of college football right here on ESPN. <laughs> 33 ticks left on the clock in this opening quarter. Still from Texas on defense. I'm expecting one long throw with the wind. Pitch. Hill close to a first down. In fact, he may have it at the 29-yard line. And unless the Aggies do something to stop the clock, that could be their last play with the wind here in the opening quarter. It has stopped momentarily because of the moving of the chains. He did pick up the first down. So they'll get another. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, and I hope you've had a great day. Bullock rolls the pocket after play action, throws wide open in the flat. Smith, and he will have the first down plus seven more as he'll take it to the 46-yard line. A mismatch for Texas because Dietrich Smith, the fullback's coming out of the backfield versus Winford Tubbs. You see Winford Tubbs over-checking with the coaching staff. He's having problems on that play because of the crossing action by the backs. Clock is whistled back in, down to two seconds, down to one, and that was the final play of the opening quarter. So let's take a timeout from College Station. It is Texas 3, Texas A&M nothing. We'll be right back. Well, you can see some water sprinkles there on, uh, on that camera, 3 to nothing as we begin the second quarter. Blowing rain, it is 32 degrees here at College Station, and in the second half, they say we may get sleet and maybe a little snow. As the running play with Hill will go just across the 50-yard line, and this is the storyline on that first 15 minutes. For the Longhorns, three sacks, and Adams with the 41-yard prop return, setting up the field goal. And for Texas A&M, 12 carries, only 20 yards, pulling three of five for 35. And now Pulick works into the wind in the second quarter. Counter Trey Hill tries to get it outside and he loses his footing. Van Malone was coming up to try to make the tackle, but Texas definitely had an ally there with the wet turf as Hill fell down. Had a play, Ron, until he slipped. The Texas defense must stop the run, force turnovers, and do not give up a big play. You've got to make Texas A&M work for everything. 
All right now, Mike, number 34, Leland McElroy, has come into the backfield for the Aggies. And I look back at the Louisville game, and he is the man that set them on fire that night. He's the man who turned around the fortunes of their offense. McElroy in motion. Pass overthrown and incomplete. And McElroy is downfield clapping his hands because, Mike, somebody had blown a coverage. He was all alone out at the 30-yard line. Wide open, but Corey Pulling just didn't see him. Had the short pass, just overthrew it. You can see the uh, disgust that Corey Pulling knows he had a completion just overthrew the football. This Mike Texas Adam. defense getting more and more confidence each series. See if Bennett will kick it to Adams this time, who had a 41-yard return on his last attempt. And the ball is snapped over his head, and there's no safety valve. Bennett now running the ball, doesn't try to kick it, and goes out of bounds at the 37. What a break for Texas. Two things happened on this. Number one, Texas had a return on because of the field position. The ball was snapped over James Bennett's head. I'm going to see it. Number 47, James Bennett. The ball really was catchable. Now, Ron, he really has time because there's nobody rushing. He should have just kicked the football. Instead, he makes a big air, tries to run the football. Victor Frazier, number seven, makes the tackle. Texas is in business on offense. There's a snap. It should have been handled. High, but still should have been handled by James Bennett. Mike, I think that's the first bad snap that that youngster has had in three years handling the chores. Still should have been handled all. Ball is loose on the ground. And you could see Morantz just go between the legs of his center, Dan Neal, and make the recovery. And let's check in with Adrian. Ron, you're absolutely right. The turf to get into play a part in this game now. You're right. Darrell Red's first bad snap in three years. Greg Hill slipping all over the place. This is more sleet than rain and is actually freezing once it hits the surface of the field now, Ron. Okay, that goes back to the point that I made in the first quarter and early points and how big they could be because now we are having trouble seeing the far side of the field at times because of the moisture that is coming across. It is going to get slicker by the moment. Get in the backfield, Shane Adams all over Phil Brown. That's the second time the Texas has tried to run the counter and has not been able to block Sam Adams. When you run the counter, you block back. They'll try to block back on number 95, but he's just so quick on his first step, he beats the block, makes the tackle on Phil Brown in the backfield. Sam Adams, talented defensive lineman. Yep, he really is. His father was a very good one, played a long time in the pros with the Patriots. Third down, the line to make for Texas is inside the 28. Moran looking, going to go on top. Has a man in the end zone, Adams, and it hit him right in the chest as it was deflected by an Aggie defensive back. I don't know if Aaron Glenn really touched that ball. We'll take maybe take a look at it here in a second, but Aaron Glenn was in pretty good position but underplayed it. Mike Adams may have had a shot of this football. Mike, I thought it hit him right in the shoulder pads. We'll see if it was deflected or not. Michael Adams, it, I, I didn't think it just hit him in the pads. And what happened was Aaron Glenn bothered him a little bit with his hand, hands. The hand was just going by his face, but it did. It hit him right in the breadbasket. So the Longhorns squander a great opportunity with the wind. And this punt inside the five, pushed back, and it is going to be touched dead at the one-yard line. Boy, did Texas really do a job on special teams. So let's take a break. 11.51 left until halftime. Longhorns, three to nothing. Sure. ESPN's presentation of CFA Thursday Night Football is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, performance, and value are never optional. And by Burger King, and its everyday value menu, where you can have it your way. I love this place. 
Adams on the near sideline who had a, a close encounter with the uh, with a deep pass by Marins. And in fact, both of the wide receivers now have been hit in the hands, Mike, on potential touchdown catches. And you've got to make those catches when you're trying to upset a football team. They move the ball to the nine yard line as the running play Stoney Clark will step up into the hole and Rodney Thomas is the man who will be stuck. Special teams can be a big part of a victory and in this case Texas punts the football and their defenders John Hunter 46 Brian Howard were able to get down and play like shortstops not let the ball get in the end zone to put AM in the hole. Good look at Stoney Clark there out of Gladewater who made the tackle. And Mike, your point is well taken because with the stuffing of the play just a moment ago, it is now second and ten. And this is the worst field position that AM has started from this evening. Draw play. Winford Todd is the man of the moment. When you call in defensive signals when you have somebody backed up. With the rain and the wind in their face, now you try to play defense against the run. Winfred Tubbs reads the draw all the way and beats the block. Number 44 was able to come right in. Ron, the only tight pass plays you figure that AM will throw coming out of the end zone. Little short passes to the fullback because they've had him open in the flat or run the football. Third down, and the Aggies need to move the ball out to the 19 yard line to keep this drive alive. Put a short drop out of the backfield, incomplete. As he was looking for McElroy out of the backfield, and now let's see how Bennett handles punting into the win. Now, if I'm Texas and I'm coaching Texas right now, I'm going after this punt. You had a snap that was high. James Bennett has to be a little nervous. You shouldn't be able to return this kick because it should probably be a low one into the wind. So rather than try to return, go after for the block. Try to see how James Bennett, number 47, the punter, was affected by that last exchange from Darrell Red. Pressure up the middle. They got him coming. Kick into the wind, and this is just dying. Adams with the fair catch at the 36-yard line. So it's 27 yards on the punt. Good decision by Texas because he can't return the short kick into the wind. Look at the turnaround, the defensive turnaround by Texas. First five games gave up 248 yards rushing. Last five, 137 points allowed, 34.8 to 15.4. I think a lot has to do with the back fact that Watler's back. No Winford Tubbs now is playing football consistently. Roderick Walker checks into the backfield for Texas in the 24. Play action to him, and they're going to go on top. And Adams, the intended receiver at the 15-yard line, and Mickens had to cover on him. Just figure you're going to have so many shots at field position against this Texas A&M defense. Shea Morenz, one out of eight for two yards. But the big thing, he has not thrown it to the other team. You know and what? That's been a key. Mike, with the weather conditions, though, an important point is, with 10.09 left to play until halftime, neither quarterback has completed a pass to a wide receiver yet. All have been the backs. The pitch goes to Walker behind a block as five has nine and close to the first down depending on where they're going to give him a spot. And as they come in from the near sideline Mickens is the man who made the stop and I don't believe he's going to have it. I think he's going to be about six inches short. John Elmore, number 66, as you look at John Makovic, the offensive guard, picks up a big block for Roderick Walker, number 24. Now he's into the secondary, making the defensive backs make the tackle. Michael Hendricks, number 40, with the tackle. The first down, man. It is the first down for Texas. So if you have just joined us, a 20-yard field goal, the difference in this ball game. Ten minutes left to play until halftime. It is Longhorns three and Texas A&M nothing. A&M with the blitz. They fake the counter, throw the pass in the 
flat and have it complete at the 20-yard line that Phil Brown will have a gain of six on the play. Six yards on first down, big for Texas. Phil Brown out of the backfield against the Texas A&M defense. Such a hard, hard charging defensive line. That type of play really try to tries to hold the front of uh, Texas A&M to buy some time for Shea Morens. Phil Brown, on Phil Brown. Reception. 33 receptions coming yep. into the night. Averaging eight just over eight. eight. Sam Adams and stuck behind the line again. They're going to go in the locker room at halftime and they're going to say we can't run the counter till we can block Sam Adams. We're going to have to change our blocking scheme. They're ha they have to change something to block Sam Adams. He never gives you a chance to run the counter. So he's up the field too quick. He just destroys the block of the back and makes the tackle on Roderick Walker. I'd put that one in uh, reserve for a while. Save it. Brockemeyer, number 78, working against Sam Adams. Lorenz lofts his pass. Nobody home. Is that a mark where he stepped out of bounds, or is that a flag? A flag has been dropped, and now it comes out on the field of play. They may call Steve Solari for pass interference. First, a marker came out where the youngster went out of bounds, and then a flag was dropped at the spot. And as you can see, there's a lot of pointing at this juncture. Different style of dress for the officials tonight. The one on the left's a little smarter than the other two. A little bit more on. It is going to be pass interference against Texas A&M. Steve Solari, the linebacker, is, is in man coverage versus Curtis Jackson. Now, see number 94. He's working against the back out of the backfield. He's just going to kind of, oh, my gosh. Mm. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, this is something AM's has been getting away with all year long. They've actually been riding their shoulder, looking back at the ball into the receiver on an outside release, pushing the potential receiver out of bounds. Texas picked it up on tape this past week. Been complaining about it to the officials the past two plays like that. And they finally got nailed. Well, I know that they did, but I, I don't know, Adrian. I, I think that Texas may have gotten a big break on that one. But the point of the matter is, it is first and goal Longhorns, and the ball rests at the 10 yard line. Texas leads 3 to nothing with 8.56 left until the halftime. Now they moved the ball back to the 11 yard line. Up, now it's back to the 10 yard line. They better come snap this ball quick. Yeah, if I was Texas, I like it better at the 10. If it's inside the 10, Ron, they cannot get a first down. 79,000 on their feet. Well, you can see on the left side, Bradley looked as though he came out of his stance, and that's where not maintaining your focus and poise can cost you dearly. You can see the Aggie middle backers stepping up, but there's still no kids, and you know the snap count to get five yards against your team. Boy, now, that's killer. Now John Makovic is facing first down and goal from the 15-yard line, just inside the 15. This is Phil Brown time down here. Working Phil Brown versus the linebackers of Texas A&M. You know what else might work from this distance right here, Mike? A pitch and a half-back pass. I'd rather have my quarterback throwing it down here, but uh, that might be the call. You never know. Aggie secondary drops off like they're looking for a throw. Lorenz over the middle. Incomplete at the five-yard line. Michael Adams, the man that he wanted. Shea Moran looks a little nervous to me, throwing the football. Not taking enough time, sitting in the pocket. Looks to be a little bit nervous. Of course, when you're 19 years old, facing the wrecking crew defense and 79,000 people, and it's raining out, it's, I'd be a little nervous myself. 
second and goal. Flag down again, Ron. I'm not so sure they got the playoff, did they? No, illegal procedure. They did get it off, but they had movement again. Started at the 10, now they're going to be back to the 20. Two calls, and you can credit this to the crowd and the noise. What Texas A&M will try to do on defense now with the long yardage situation, second and 20 for a touchdown. They'll try to double up both wide receivers, Michael Adams and Lavelle Pinkney. Middle linebackers on the blitz from A&M. Texas picks it up. Moran goes back wide against open. the grain. Wide open, and it is knocked down by Steve Kenny. He just underthrew it. Oh, my goodness. Texas had a sure six points. The reason they bust the coverage is Lavelle Pinkney was inside as a tight end. It brought him in real tight. And he worked against the linebacker, but Shane Morenz again did not get anything underneath this football. Never gets his feet really set. Lavelle Pinkney sitting in the end zone wide open. Steve Kenny with a good effort to get back. Look at Lavelle Pinkney. He's Look wide open. open. Just needs the football. Too long. I'd run it again, Sam. I'd play the same play. <laughs> Lawrence deep over the middle, incomplete, not close to anybody. I think Hakes is the man he was throwing for. Well, he didn't make the mistake he's made all year and throw the interception, so you still have a chance for the field goal. You have a chance to go up six to nothing. Well, for Shea Morantz, he has now hit two of his last 12 passes. In fact, one of his last 11. You so, Sheretti. And you the, know something that's interesting about that? The point you just had? They're still leading the football game. Three yeah. to nothing. 37-yard attempt from the far hash mark. Whistle, kick was good. They'll get another chance to kick it. Illegal procedure against Texas. Well, let me make one point. This youngster's already kicking a, th it's going to now be a 42 yarder, and this line is going to be started at the 10 yard line. Crowd noise again. Give the crowd credit. Three penalties in this series against Texas. Texas practiced the other day at their stadium with the fight songs on real loud, but you can never really practice unless you get 79,000 people out there to help you. You never really hear the same type of noise that you're hearing tonight. Penalty will move it back to the 25-yard line. So now the attempt by Sheretti from the 32, making it a 42-yard attempt. Texas leads three to nothing. This would put him on top by six. Good pass, plenty of distance, and he's got it. Sheretti from 42, so let's take a break. As we roll to break, 8.30 left until halftime with our new score, Texas 6 and Texas A&M nothing. Texas A&M defense on the near sideline talking it over. Mike, when you look at the numbers on this drive, it's, it's a little strange, but uh, the field goal will come. And we'll show you in just a second on uh, what the distance was and the number of plays as you look at McElroy, number 34, one of the two deep men for Texas A&M. Billy Mitchell to his right. McElroy is going to return it from three yards deep, and he's got a 
acre to run. Gets by Shiretti, and so long. See ya. 103 yards, Leland McElroy. Saying officially 100 yards as the extra point attempt is up and it is good. So with 8:17 left until the halftime, this is what has just broken this ball game open. Leland McElroy, number 34, catches the deep kickoff. Now watch the wedge start for him. He waits, sets up his blocks. Now breaks to the outside, picks up some good blocks. Now the kicker, Ventulis. Just can't, doesn't have the speed. Should have forced him back inside. Shiretti. Shiretti should have forced him back inside to try to get some help, but was not able to do it. The speed of Leland McElroy. There's the blocks. Detron Smith, number 44, with a big block. Now the speed of Leland McElroy takes over. You know, the interesting thing is Shiretti has got to be kicking himself with a 30-mile-an-hour win. How could you not kick it out of the end zone? Well, he kicked it deep. To the, I mean, you kick it into the end zone. But what happens a lot of times when the ball's kicked deep like that, someone gets out of their lanes. Third kickoff return for a touchdown this season, an AM record for Leland McElroy. Big plays. That's what you can't afford to give up. Gary Darnell, the special teams coach of the University of Texas. Michael Adams in a deep safety for the Longhorns at the 13-yard line. will take it out to the 34-yard line. Well, the student of the game brought to you by the U.S. Army is Kyle Maxfield. He is a backup defensive back, an outstanding special teams player. He has compiled a 3.25 grade point average in kinesiology. He's a junior athletically and a senior academically. And our congratulations to him being the U.S. Army student of the game. Seven to six, Texas A&M on top. Eight thirteen left until the half time. They fake the counter tray this time, and Moran's going to run five, ten, fifteen, and he is inside the fifty and all the way down to the forty-four yard line. That's going to be a gain of twenty-one yards by Shea Moran. Because Sam Adams in the last few plays has really been charging hard inside to stop the counter, John Makovic makes a call where he gives the kind of action that he wants Sam Adam Adams to bite on. You see Sam Adams really work to the wide side of the field. Now Shane Morenz is open for a long gain on the right side. They took advantage of the aggressiveness of Sam Adams. Jackson with the pitch breaks off one tackle Adams will get him as he will go inside the 40 down to the 38 yard line the rivalry is something when you when you think of Texas and Texas A&M it's the one game when you're coaching at a school your rival where you keep an eye on what they're doing every week in season and out of season you work on them constantly throughout the year on your bulletin board you might be playing Louisville like Texas A&M but you've got a bulletin board of what's happening in Texas too you constantly have to beat your rival. Six 
second and short. Jackson looks for a spot to run. There's not much there as Larry Jackson comes up to make the hit. And now it's going to be a third down situation. Texas A&M defense, when you think, Ron, the chances that Texas has had here in the first half of scoring a touchdown, you've got, you have to credit Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, and this wrecking crew defense. They just will not allow you in that end zone. Only giving up two touchdowns this season at home. Clock runs. We have 640 until halftime. A&M 7, Texas 6. Lorenz rolls the pocket, drills the pass, has it complete at the 24-yard line to Michael Adams. Now Shea Lorenz looks to me like he's playing with a little bit more confidence. After the score of Texas A&M with Leland McElroy's run, it looks like now Shea Lorenz now has settled down a little bit. Michael Adams with a good out route. Shea Lorenz with a good throw to the outside against Aaron Glenn, number 31. the middle. Moran scrambling to his right will come out of bounds and boy does he get tagged at the 23 yard line. I think it was Antonio Shorter number yeah. 56 and leveled him. You like your quarterback to get out of bounds. Well I think next time Shea will either slide or get out of bounds a little quicker. Well, that's a 19-year-old inning. When he gets a little bit more experienced, he'll know he has to get down yeah, or but get out of bounds. Any more of those, and he'll never see 20. <laughs> and now a timeout is called by Texas A&M. So let's take it with him. 5.56 left until halftime. A&M by one. So you want to try something different for a change? Drop in anytime, day or night. Pebbles is a great restaurant for casual dining in a sophisticated atmosphere. Choose from creative light bites, like black bean quesadillas or spicy duck wings, to soups, salads, and special entrees cooked to order. The entire menu is available all day. There's simply no other restaurant like it. Pebbles. Why not try something different for a change? In downtown Orlando, Longwood, Lake Buena Vista, and Winter Park. technology right from the start it's a state of the arts with the best in quality turn it on you're gonna love the sound turn it on the very best around diamond sound has it all the highest technology at the lowest price turn it on glossary primer number 108 Sometimes a professional athlete becomes a professional bench warmer. If he's not on the bench, he's in the box, in the dugout, injured, depressed, oh, whatever. He's not out there. You don't see him all season. He's missing. So logically, if he's missing, he should be on a milk carton. Watch Rome, speak Rome. <laughs> talk to Phone in sports talk with a language all its own. Monday through Friday, 10.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. One of the yell leaders here at Texas A&M, and you can see that those youngsters wear the rolled up sleeves, and that's it. Uh, and folks, it is 32 and falling with 30 mile an hour winds. And I don't need to tell you what kind of grit it takes to do what he's doing. On second down, the run up the middle, Anthony Holmes will have it to around the 20 yard line. And now for the Horns, it'll be a third down and five. And Mike. What do you pull out here? Do you pull out the play where Pinkney looked like the first guy out to the workout again? or Number 29, Phil Brown is the player I'm going to give the football to. He's on some quick trap up inside, Ron, because try to trap the defense inside. If I don't make the first down, I have a chance to take the lead with a field goal. Or try to hit him with a little short pass out of the backfield. Blitz up the middle. And he just throws it away. 
So what happens when you're a young quarterback sometimes, you get in a rhythm of calling the signals the same way. It looks to me like Texas A&M showed the blitz but timed it up perfect. Junior White, number five, a safety was on the blitz, but they timed the cadence of Shea Morenz right down to the time it was going to be snapped, and they were off on the blitz. He's going to have to change up the cadence a little bit to try to draw A&M offside. Scott Cerini, who already has a couple of field goals in uh, this ball game tonight, 20 and 42. Will attempt this one from the near hash mark and a 37-yard attempt. Good pass, good distance, no accuracy here. And Cerini misses wide to the right. Missed opportunity. Scott Charetti, number three, with the kick. Misses. And a missed opportunity for the Texas offense. Well, NFL Sunday night. This Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern time. The Pittsburgh Steelers against the Houston Orders. A battle for the AFC Central Division lead as both teams are 6-4. and four. Pittsburgh's Rod Woodson leads the NFL with seven interceptions. Warren Moon and company now played improved football. A rematch of a couple of very old riders. Pulling, lost the pass, has it complete, and knocked out of bounds immediately as Mitchell. Corey Pulling had two receivers wide open. His tight end, Greg Short, was wide open from the cross. And Brian Mitchell wide open. Good play fake by Corey Pulling, number four. Four out of eight for 52 yards, but the play fake really opened up the wide receivers. And you can see the numbers on Pulling. He's now four of eight. Clock is stopped with 5.02 until halftime. Aggies by one. Hill to the right side. Big opening has five and out to the 48 yard line. Gonna see the tailback counter this way, and the guard is gonna pull and make the block on the defense again. Greg Hill, you just ran a play a minute ago, the same kind of action and threw the pass. Now you come back with Tyler Harrison, number 55, the pulling guard, run the football. Good mix by Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator of AM. Hill now nine carries, 54 yards. Boy, ever since that kickoff return, the momentum has just really swung to this AM football team in the crowd. Texas really needs a stop on defense. Dexter Wesley, number 75, the left tackle. Actually, was lined up on the right that time. A very good block to help break the way for uh, Greg Hill. Winfred Tubbs, the big middle linebacker for the Texas Longhorns, as you look, and believe it or not, the winds have, well, if they subsided, maybe a little from the big flags, but it is still very, very breezy. The small American flags at the top of the stadium are just completely straight out. Hill again, pressure in the backfield, and Stoney Clark will hit him and knock him down behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a second down and 11. He'll lose one. Bob Toledo talked about Corey pulling his quarterback. He said he's vastly improved. He understands our offense, but now he understands defense. He's getting a little bit more experienced, and he can make the change at the line of scrimmage and get Texas A&M out of some bad calls. Call comes from the sidelines. Maybe it's not against the defense they like. Corey Pulley can get him out of that play with a check off. It again, Pulley drills the pass, has it complete, incomplete now, as Mitchell couldn't hold on at the Texas 41, and it's Bryant Westbrook who is there to make the tackle on him. What sets this play up, Ron, is the fact that Texas A&M is such a strong running team, and when you get a good play fake out of Corey Pulley, 
Now he seems to throw the ball across his body a little bit, but the receiver, Mitchell, wide open. I mean, that ball's got to be caught. Both quarterbacks have had some drop passes tonight. Cold weather, yep. wet weather uh, affects the wide receivers. Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator, graduate of San Francisco State, played for Vic Rowan out there. 331 left until the half end. Pull it. Pressure on him again. Lucky to get it away as he was being sandwiched between a couple of uh, defensive players, Thomas Bat Baskin and also Kevin Watler. Ron, then you're going to look back on this series because this series was a big series for this Texas defense because they had to make the stop and stop this momentum of AM. And they still have 325 on the clock to work with with their offense. James Bennett with his fourth punt. You can see the numbers on Adams that uh, he can burn you just as quickly as McElroy did. Bear catch a signal four and is made at the 28 yard line. So it's a 24 yard kick into the wind and we have 317 left until the halftime. Well coming up tomorrow West Virginia and Boston College number three against number 11 four o'clock Eastern time and you know what both of them did last week huge upset wins over Notre Dame and Miami respectively that should be a very very good football game it's going to be which team can handle the success of the big win last week Boston College over Notre Dame and of course West Virginia over Miami which team can handle the win Lorenzo roll the pocket for him still rolling now drills the ball and almost intercepted and that is what has been getting Morenz in problem. He stared that receiver down, gave the defensive back. You could see him breaking on the ball. Freshman and it was almost intercepted. Freshman mistake, but he just took too long and then wound up to throw the football. This ball should have been intercepted. See him pat the football, too. He's got a bad habit of patting the football before he throws, which will tip off the defensive back to make his break. Junior White, number five, should have intercepted that football. The numbers on Lorenz, 3 of 15, 20 yards. <laughs> Movement at the line of scrimmage. And, well, I couldn't tell. I thought it was Bradley who came out of a stance again. He was the youngster that was having problems back when Texas got the three straight penalties from the 10-yard line. Steve Bradley, 89, a freshman, 6'2", 224. You have to look into the football, especially with the noise factor the way it is tonight. Your wide receiver, you look in, you get your signals from the quarterback, then you look into the football, and he'll move to that football snap. Solari, number 94 in coverage against Jimmy Hicks. Felt like that he just, he underplays it a little bit. Watch number 94, Steve Solari. Zone coverage, he gets his drop. Now Jimmy Hicks drifts a little bit. You're going to see Steve Solari just not get back far enough. And there's the pass reception to Jimmy Hicks. Jimmy Hicks never gave up on the throw. Okay. Kept running down the field. 40-yard reception by him as the clock runs. Two minutes and 40 seconds until halftime. Counter tray. Brown has a blocker in front. Tries to get to the outside, but the speed of the AM defense is there as there were one, two, and then three Aggies, bam, 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 to knock him out of bounds. Now they blocked it different this time. They blocked Sam Adams on the counter. They blocked back on him. So they ran the counter. That play still didn't have a lot of success, only picked up a yard. But, Ron, there's 2.32 on the clock, and Texas has one timeout. They've got to get in field goal race to take this lead before halftime. Texas has three timeouts, and then one timeout. A lot of 
time for the Texas offense. Blitz up the middle and they go with the pitch. Brown runs into his own man and it also one of the AM defenders. Antonio Shorter, Junior White, will corral him and now it's going to be a third down situation. You see more and more blitz out of the Texas A&M defense because again they're timing up Shea Morens. Under two minutes left until the half time. Two out of nine for Texas on third down. Not very good. Blitz. Pass over the middle. He's got a man there. Overthrown as Adams had beaten the coverage. But Marins had to get it away with the prayer. He was under so much pressure. Keep repeating it, but they're timing up the cadence of Shane Marins, and they're coming with the blitz, and they're not able to pick it up. Shane Marins really did a nice job getting this football. You see the linebackers coming on the snap of the ball. He doesn't have time enough to get this football off. But he still is able to get a pretty good throw out there that just overthrows Michael Adams. So now she's ready to a, attempt a field goal of 48 yards. Good pass. Plenty of distance on this one, and he's good. Scott Sheretti, three of four tonight. This one from 48, and the Horns go back on top, 9-7. The good news is you're ahead, 9-7. to seven. The bad news is you have to kick off to Leland McElroy. Well, the bottom line is, you don't, the bottom line is, you don't have to kick to McElroy. No, I tell you, he should drill this one with this win. He should drill it out of the end zone. Or keep it away from Leland McElroy. But, Ron, you have to credit Texas. Uh, you, the touch, long kickoff return, and they're able to take the balls. Two big plays to get back down and take the lead. It'd be important for this Texas football team with the youth that they have to go in the locker room with the halftime lead. Coming up at halftime, NFL highlights, also the halftime blitz and giving back on Thanksgiving. That and a lot more at uh, halftime. What a great day, Thanksgiving. I know I'm very thankful, and I know you are too. I mean, it's been a, it's great. We live in a great country, great opportunities. A lot of times, obviously, we take for granted, but but hopefully, more and more people on days like today that that we do get with our families and our loved ones and we help people that that are in need and do make it truly a day of thanks. Well let's watch this coverage of the kick from the rear angle and see what you see. Jaredi's kick and he'll kick it on the ground. Knocked down by one of the up blockers and this kick will be to the 33 yard line. Anthony is the man who fielded the ball. Six plays, 40 yards, 48 yard field goal, and Texas used a minute and 41 seconds on that drive. It's interesting, Ron, when we sat in the press box the other day and watched practice with Daryl Royal, and he talked about the rivalry. And I asked him, I said, how many coaches did you coach against at AM? And he started naming them. He went through about six that he put into other fields while he was coaching at the University of Texas with a lot of success, but a lot of great coaches at AM that he went against that he had a lot of respect for. Middle screen. Greg Hill gets a block and a lot of running room. to Greg Hill. What sets the screen up is you're going to see Greg Hill just step to the left and then he'll just angle here to allow his blockers to get in front of him on the screen. They really invite the Texas defensive lineman to come on in. Now he just slips outside, picks up some key blocks and a big, big first down. Ball resting at the Texas 37-yard line as we go under one minute until halftime. Pulling, fakes the reverse, 
going to go up on top. And he's looking for his running back. And Texas had that one scouted all the way. And now here comes a flag. Well, there's no doubt this is offensive interference. I think Cliff Gross will be called for pass interference offensively. There's just no way it can be anything else. Michael, you are right. Now he actually became a defender on this thing and just reached out and grabbed a hold of the Texas defender. You're going to see number 33, Cliff Gross. He reaches his hand. He's in a mugging. Chris Carter, number 16, to keep him from intercepting the football. Cliff was well covered by Chris Carter. You see the timeouts left. A&M has won. The clock with 51 seconds until halftime. Texas 9, Texas A&M 7. White jersey started to cover it up, and then Harrison lost his footing. And you're right, on this side of the field, it looks as though there was a lot of green. Ron, they're trying to take advantage of the fact that Texas plays a lot of man coverage, and if you can pick the wide receiver's man and you got the middle screen called, I mean, you can have a big play. You can see what Pulling is doing. The officials have stopped play momentarily as they have a question. The Pulling is saying, to heck with that, come back here and huddle with me so I can call at least one play, if not sequence a couple, with 30 seconds left until the halftime. And he has to be ready to go as soon as they rule the play in to start. And Texas knows full well that the man they need to watch on this play also is 34, Leland McElroy, the red shirt freshman out of Beaumont Central. Why didn't the clock start there? Pressure, ball is tipped in the air, and I believe Johnson, Brian Johnson, number 13, is the man who tipped it. Good pressure by Texas. Robert Reed, Brian Johnson, number 13, they pressured Corey Pulling. But, Ron, why didn't the, place, the clock start when they put the play back in, when the referee made the call? I would have figured that the play clock would have started. I don't know because it was a com complete right, impatience and right they there. stopped and huddled yeah. a little bit then they started to play but the clock didn't move now I think that's what they're talking about down here the officials if you that look in the middle of the field they're in a conference there's 26 seconds left there shouldn't be 26 seconds on that clock well now Texas is saying wait a minute don't penalize us <laughs> The clock did not move after they had their conference, and it should have moved. I'm sure John Makovic's aware of that. R.C. Slocum paces on the near side. The offense is back on the field, and it is third down rather than fourth down. John looks satisfied with what he's telling him. I remember the middle screen and Harrison fell down and in the past that got he got chased back to the 40 yard line and I can't think of another play so we're double checking here. Maybe we'll get, uh, well, he's coming over well, to talk to R.C. Slocum now. And then there was one more play, and that was because of the penalty that the down was replayed in the offensive pass interference. Here. Here's what I'm talking about, Ron. Now, the ball is being put in play. He starts the clock, but the clock doesn't move. So there's a good four, five, six seconds that's still in this clock. So, uh, We'll see if it comes back to uh, affect Texas or not. I think the question was, is whoever was working the downs marker had counted the offensive pass interference as a loss of down, which it is not. The old rule. Yeah. 
So now it's third. Pulling under pressure. Goes on top. Looking for Harrison. And he's got it at the 14-yard line. Tony Harrison versus, versus Brian Westbrook. And when you play a lot of man coverage, you get in situations where a quarterback will put it up. Corey Pulling and Tony Harrison just did a better job of coming back to the football. The ball was underthrown. Now there's 18 seconds left. 31 yards in the pass play. And now the fade route. Harrison in the end zone. Touchdown, Texas a and Flags come down and movement I'll on tell you, the extra point. I tell you, Ron, now, I would think about going for two here. If you get this penalty on Texas with the score 13 to 9, I'd try to pick up two points and make it a six point lead. That's what they're going to do, too. Down by, you're, you're ahead by four. One point just puts you up five, but two points puts you up by two po uh, by six points. Tony Harrison, number three on the fade, just wide open, uh, beats Bryant Westbrook, number 30. An excellent throw by Corey Pulley. Now, Ron, they can go up by six if they can make this two-point conversion. And a good call by R.C. Slocum to go for the two. Tony Harrison. He has been the hero of this drive that just got him the touchdown. This one in motion, but they'll go with the running play. And Hill will score the two. Picked up a big block by Detron Smith, number 44. As you see the heads of the Texas defense, they're a little bit discouraged as they come off the field. Still only down by six. So we have 12 seconds left until halftime. And let's send it back to Chris Fowler. Chris? All right, Ron, and happy Thanksgiving to you guys from all of us here. At halftime, the blitz, and we'll show you the finish of that wild Dolphins-Cowboys game. This afternoon in college football, Georgia-Georgia Tech, a little turkey day brawl with the Bulldogs Piling it on late in the fourth quarter. Eric Zier, the touchdown pass on fourth and goal, made it 43-10, and then things get ugly here. The Jackets and Bulldogs scuffling all over the field. Coach Ray Goff gets involved and ends up heaving a couple of his players out of the way. The final, 43-10. They both finish at 5-6. and six. Louisville shuts out Tulsa, but Jeff Brom, a strained back and a broken index figure, and in Division Three, St. John's a late field goal to beat the Stony Brook Patriots. See you at halftime. Let's go back now to College State. Westbrook on the sideline being consoled by his teammates and he's got another half of football to play. He better forget what happened on that drive. Ron, he's a freshman. He's a freshman defensive back. You're going to make mistakes. Tony Harrison's a senior receiver working against him. He's an experienced football team at Texas A&M. They just keep working at you. Penatulius to kick it off, and I'm going to be amazed if he kicks it off to Adams and gives him an opportunity to put Texas back in front of the ball game. Greg Hill on the touchdown gets a good block by number 44, the fullback. And a good block by Detron Smith, and there's just nobody outside. And a reaction by R.C. Slocum on the two-point conversion. 
So it is 15 to 9, Texas A&M, and we should have time for one play the before Hail they Mary. head to the locker room. Hail Mary. And Texas A&M will play deep with the defensive backs. Their job is to protect the goal line. rolls the pocket drills it has it complete and I believe the clock had run out it is complete to Adams she will be given forward progress to the 43 and let's make sure there are no flags on the field they're talking about if there's any time left here Texas has not left the field not the referees are saying they're out of time that is halftime so let's take a break as we head to intermission, our score, Texas A&M 15, and the Texas Longhorns 9. Halftime is next. Texas 15 to 9, our halftime score. Texas A&M leading the Texas Longhorns as the Aggies are making their way back out on the field. And Mike, how about these numbers in the first 30 minutes? Well, when you look at it, Ron, I think the key numbers are first down average, 8.4 for Texas A&M that's big even though it's only 1.4 rushing yards you have to put in the sacks in there also but I think the key again is the fact that Texas A&M is winning first down the rushing chart of the Texas Longhorns is one reason why they're not running the football in the middle and that's Sam Adams he's just controlling the middle of the football field to try to run the football. They're having a little more success on the outside. 12 attempts for 62 yards, so they've got to continue to try to get the ball outside against the AM defense. Mike, very good news. We didn't know what to expect in the second half. The winds have continued, but we don't see any moisture flying right now, which is a very good way as you look at those flags. It's really gusting close to 30 miles an hour but at least there's no moisture coming down well John McAvick had a big decision to make when he, he has a choice here in the second half and he take made the choice of taking the football I would have done the same thing now you're going to take the third quarter in the wind but if he can stay close in the third quarter then he has a chance to win it at the wire and that has to be his thinking you know that has to have been also what he told his ball club in the locker room to start this ball game because as you mentioned at the end of the first quarter they were acting as though that was a victory and the fact that they were leading three to nothing they won the first quarter the second quarter they just made some mistakes and I'd still like to know why that clock didn't move when the officials had their conference after the conference why the 30 seconds didn't start then with the kickoff and this is to Adams at the five Adrian Carson, what do you have for us? Ron, from the Longhorn locker room at halftime, a phrase that has been the kind of the catchphrase for this time, entire team all season long. Guys were told by the coaches, look, guys, remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. This has got to be your half now. Over on the AM side, Coach Slocum said, look, guys, take a deep breath, calm down, start playing your game. It is time. Emotion, forget the emotion, and the talent has got to take over. Ron, the Texas is using the Robert Schuler. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. So they're borrowing from Reverend Schuler. Texas works into the wind in this third quarter. Moran's going to throw on first down, zings it, and has it complete. And that is the first reception by Lavelle Pickney, I believe, in the ball game, isn't it? It is the first catch, Ron. I'd marked it down at halftime that the big wide receiver out of Washington, D.C., who's used to playing in cold weather. One of the reporters asked him the other day, do you remember playing in cold weather in high school? He said, I love to play in that zero weather. You see Sam Adams hitting Shea Moran's, but there's the catch by Lavelle Pinckney. Sam might have gotten away with what could have been a 15-yard penalty there. He uh, came down across his throat after he hit him in the head. That was Jackson. Or you can see the tag there as Adams comes up to be one of the first A&M players to make the hit. When we were over at Texas on Tuesday, they had a sign by the locker room, and it just kept going on and off. A neon sign said the battle lasts 60 minutes. The victory lasts a lifetime. And as Daryl Royal put it the other day, when you pay, play your rival and you lose, 
you live with it for 365 days till you get another shot at him. So you do not want to lose to your rival. Second down, pressure up the middle. Moranz will be hit, and he's sacked. Steve Solari and Lance Tackleman. Bob Davey, as the second quarter started coming to an end, started bringing pressure. The wide rush, they're moving Steve Solari out a little wider, and the pressure, and also Lance Tackleman, number 58 from the inside, just beat the Texas offensive line. That's a loss of nine on the sack. Third down, and the line to make is all the way across midfield to the a and 44 and a half yard line. They set screen, and as soon as the ball is caught, hit behind the line, and an incomplete pass as Atkinson was there to mess up the whole thing. Man coverage there, but it's a screen to the back, and Jason Atkinson read it right away. He has the back man for man, Phil Brown. He just beat the block of the offensive lineman. You see John Makovic talking to Blake Brockermeyer, the tackle. Jason Atkinson was able to come underneath him. Vasek stands back waiting for the snap at the 27-yard line. Line drive kick to Aaron Glenn. He will run away from it. Now was on the ground, and the Aggies had a player who had fallen down there and had to get up and get away from the football. It's 38 yards on the punt. And Adrian, let's go to you. Well, Ron, uh, just to put a period on what Coach was talking about there, the game is 60 minutes, yes, but the memories last a lifetime. The last thing the seniors asked each other, they said, look, we don't win this game. We've got no bowl to go to. This could be the last football game we ever play. How do you want to remember? It's an emotional ball game, the last ball game for a senior, whether you're on the road or at home. Texas has one shot to continue this season. And it's here tonight. We don't win tonight, Ron. It's, the basketball's out. Full exchange hands it off to Hill. He will go left side for close to five yards. Out to around the 28 and a half yard line is Kevin Wattler. The senior from Stratford is there to make the stop on him. Leon Fuller, defensive coordinator, has to be pleased with the way his defense has played tonight. Again, good effort out of Tony Brackens up inside Stoney Clark. They're able to try to handle that big Texas A&M offensive line, 289, 267, 285. And they're just big offensive line for A&M. Complete. It was Mitchell that they wanted. He's a junior out of Dallas Carter. Ball is thrown just a little bit short, and it'll be third down AM. What makes the curl route a good route is you're going to see Corey Pulling roll to the right side. What makes the curl route go is that a receiver will go in the flat and take out the underneath coverage, and then when Brian Mitchell runs the curl, he's wide open. But the throw was in the ground. Tailbacks. McElroy, Hill, and Thomas lining up. They roll the pocket. They swing it in the front, and it's caught by Hill, and he drops the football. And now they say incomplete pass, and let's see what the marker is thrown at the line of scrimmage. That's the alumni formation when you put those three great backs in the backfield at the same time, but they've had some success with that tonight. You know how the, all the alumni are. They say, you got all those three backs. Why don't you put them in the game same time? So this is the alumni formation. They'll get out of it and go back to a conventional set and hope the receivers around the country are not watching. You have to say Texas is going to decline. Which is declined. Right. Fourth down. 
That was a third down play that was dropped. So it will be kicking time for James Bennett. This is the end, and Michael Adams had his good punt return. This should be a return by Texas all the way. Good football is hard. Didn't want to turn over. As Adams takes it up the far side, breaks one tackle, and he'll take it to the 44. Now here comes in a late flag. So we'll hold it before we go to break and see what the marker is all about. foul against the Longhorns. So, rather than taking over with great field position at the 45, they're going to go back around their own 30. Penalties have really hurt Texas tonight. So we'll take a break. 11.59 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back. State Farm presents the rules of the game. Let's talk about personal fouls and late hits. In this play, a player has been hit after he has been down. What is the penalty? Today, a woman needs a life insurance plan of her own. State Farm sells life insurance from an agent who's there for you today and there tomorrow, too. You see, we start you outright with a plan specifically designed for a woman's needs, one that protects the people who count on you for so very much. back it looked as though that they were not going to take the full timeout they did not and now they are <laughs> oh my okay that break that we came out of I have a feeling we can't jump right back into so uh Michael <laughs> whistle it right back in play. Talked to Steve Hatchell at halftime. He came by to see us and uh, find commissioner of the Southwest Conference. He's got a tough job, but he also thinks he can get it done down here. And he has made a lot of headway in a very short period of time. Well, Mike, at the line of scrimmage, and a stance ready to snap the ball. That is five times off the top of my head. I can remember that that right there has happened to Texas. Inexcusable in the 11th game of the year. Crowd noise is such a factor here, around with the 79,000, and they're yelling. And uh, but again, you're right. You must look in at the football. Sorry to say it. it you know, it, it's not a surprise no. that there's 79,000. No, we and, knew they were coming. Yes, I think we did. <laughs> I'm sure Troy Reamer knew they were coming. Seven against the Longhorns, three against the Aggies. Penalties tonight. Lorenz with a quick pass tries to get an isolation with Adams. And Aaron Glenn is not only up to the task, makes the hit and throws him out of bounds. When you run a one-back offense, you have to make some adjustments to the depth of the, the back. When Texas leaves their one-back back eight yards. You see Phil Brown here. When he's back eight, eight yards, they can do a lot of things running the ball outside. But when he moves up, he's getting a check off. Now he's moving up close. Now the only thing they can do now is throw a pass or run the ball inside. And m knows that also. counter roll the pocket and Morenz is going to carry it and he will take it close to the 35 ball is loose and they say no nope, play is dead at the 34. I think Shane Morenz made a good choice there to run that football because AM had good coverage and where he looks the most effective as a quarterback is getting outside in the pocket. He's looking to throw the ball but Larry Jackson number 37 is going to put a hit on him. And the ball comes out, but he gets a call from the officials that he was down. Tackleman saying, how could it be? And the official says, it was dead. 
Third down. Texas needs the 39. who he wanted at the 49. Aaron Glenn with the cover. What happened on that play, Ron, was Mike Adams slipped coming out of his break. He was open. Ball was thrown on the money. He just slipped and couldn't come out of his break. Aaron Glenn has good coverage, but Mike Adams, you're going to see him come out of his break. Watch him plant. Now watch him slip. See that little slip? He lost the football. He lost the, the ball with his eyes. Still should have caught that football. Should have caught the football, but the little slip cost him that reception. Wayne Vosick to punt. I think the thing that Texas also has to get going is number 80 has been a non-entity for the most part in this ball game. One catch. and m bounce touched dead by Texas around the 40. 24 yards with the punt into the win. Let's take a timeout. 15 to 9, Texas Aggies. ESPN's presentation of CFA Thursday Night Football is brought to you by your GM Goodwrench dealer. Hey, we want your business. And by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Well, this time you look at the Texas Longhorn bench and then uh, some of the band members. Rain apparel, very evident. And for the first time since all oh, about two hours before game time, we don't have any moisture coming down here. It's a very good thing because it's below freezing now, but the winds continue to gust at close to 30. Hill breaks the tackle, and he'll take it across the 45 to the 47. A lot of pressure on the offensive coordinator at Texas A&M because, especially from the student body, because they celebrate by kissing after every score. If you're an offensive coordinator here, you better put some points on the board. The students are going to get after you. I have a feeling a lot of them have rehearsed, though, in the first half and at halftime, as cold as it is. Some, Wouldn't of, those, you imagine? some of those games when they about to have scored 45 points, you could go from the first kiss to being engaged. Close to an AM first down as Wattler is down at the bottom of the stack. And from where they have marked him at the Longhorn 48 yard line, he will have the first down. Greg Hill starting to heat it up now. Now the running game of Texas AM plays a factor. 13 rushing attempts for 70 yards. Bob Toledo would like to happen, and RC Slocum is this offensive line just start controlling the line of scrimmage and start pounding the football at this Texas defense. the two successful running plays and Hill throws it intercepted. Chris Carter with the pickoff and he'll take it back to the 43-yard line. Then there's a flag too, Ron. Personal foul on Texas and m Ron, but what made this play was Leon Fuller with a great adjustment. He moves Chris Carter, the safety, up to try to stop the running game. You're going to see number 16 to the right of your screen. You see this free safety? He's moved up as a linebacker now. Now Corey Pulling never sees him because he's in a different spot, and he makes the interception. checking it but we are told that it's Pullig who the 15 yard penalty was on. Frustration after the interception. <laughs> penalty moves it to the Aggie 41. Hey <laughs> Brown hit in the backfield. Atkinson is there to knock it down for a two yard loss. Ron, let's go back to that play and the adjustment that Leon Fuller made. Here's the safety. 
Number 16, he's almost playing like a linebacker. There's Watler, and here's the free safety. Corey Pulling never sees him. He thinks he's still in the middle of the football field. There's the fake. Now he looks back. He never sees number 16, Chris Carter. What a call by Leon Ford, the defensive coordinator. And in showing blitz in the middle. Perez gets his pass away. That one-on-one -on -one coverage and Pinckney, as you could see, couldn't get back around to get to that one. And it's going to be a third down. What you might have to do if you're Texas, because you can't handle the blitz, is go to two tight ends. Take your both wide receivers to the side and run two receiver routes. The other thing is go to the shotgun where you get the direct snap. You get more of a view of the blitz and you can dump the ball off a little sooner. One of the two, John Makovic might take a look at. Blitz. Morans gets it away, and it is knocked away by Hendricks. McLemore is the intended receiver. See, Ron, if he was in the shotgun, he'd have a little bit more time to set his feet because the blitz is just on him. He never gets a chance to set his feet. He's a target. He's got a target on his chest right now. Shea Morans. I think John McAvick saying they're offside. He's coming so fast. Eric England, number 92, but you see him drifting backwards. Anytime a quarterback's drifting backwards like that and throws the ball, usually it's going to be intercepted because you never have anything on it. You're throwing a high fly out there. Well, Mike, a bad snap over the putter's head in the first half, and now an intercepted pass, and Texas comes away with no points off either situation. But, Ron, they're winning the field position war, and they will have a shot. If this game continues like it is to win it at Time the out of the field with eight minutes left in the third. We'll be right back. November the 26th, 1977, the 84th game of this series. It was his last regular season game, and Mike, he had 222 yards. He scored five touchdowns, including a TD reception, the only one of his collegiate career. You know, I've always been impressed with him as a football player, but I was really impressed the other day when he came to do his interview with the ESPN. He brought his barber with him. So he was cutting his hair just before he went on TV. I thought that was pretty impressive. You know, the truth we don't, I think that was someone else's barber. <laughs> Breaks it to the outside, McElroy, and he'll be shot out of bounds at the 22-yard line. And this freshman from Beaumont Central is always one play from putting you behind or the Aggies further ahead in the football game. You're right. R.C. Slocum says he reminds him a lot of Marshall Falk, San Diego State whiz. As a running back, said he's built just like Marshall Falk. He said he runs just like him. And uh, Leland McElroy uh, will make R.C. Slocum. Will give him a lot of wins here at Texas A&M. Seven minutes, 53 seconds left to play, third quarter. 15 to nine, Texas A&M. It's to McElroy. Tries to turn the corner. Malone will grab him and knock him down after a two-yard gain. There's an impressive football player for Texas, Van Malone. Defensive back that a lot of pro people really like. Six foot, senior, very aggressive, a sure tackler. McElroy's shaken up on that play. That uh, tackle made by Malone, it looks as though that he might have injured an ankle. So that means you think you lose McElroy. Now you have to square off against Greg Hill. He takes it right up the middle. Breaks a couple of tackles. Going to be short of the first down. AM will scrimmage with a third down and about a yard. Let's take a look at that injury. Right ankle. It caught up under Van Malone, number eight. Rodney Thomas reports into the game. We've got, got a little problem because we've got two tailbacks in. But they may move Thomas to fullback on this play. That's normally what happens uh, when they have got, them both they, in there. I think and they've it, got a problem. Going to cost them a timeout as the 25-second clock was down to four. 
so we'll take a break. 6.32 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back. The youngster can join some some popcorn at uh, tonight's ball game. Hard to tell who uh, who they're pulling for. Is, is that a young Aggie or a young Longhorn? Yeah, when he's pulling for more popcorn. <laughs> well, we talked about the the situation with McElroy, and then Hill came in after the injury, and of course you got Thomas. It's really a backbreaking situation if you're somebody like uh, the the defensive coordinator for Texas. I mean, Leon yeah, has four. to look at this. Hill, Thomas, and McElroy, and look at their numbers. Yards rushing in tonight's ball game, and, and of course, over the long haul of the season, they've averaged far more than that. And there's McElroy being taped on the sidelines, so we may see him again. Rodney Thomas in at fullback. Sharp the tight end in motion. And they give it to Thomas at the left side, and on the short yardage play, third down, he'll have the first. Now Greg Hill returns to the ball game to tailback position. R.C. Slocum continues to move the running backs in and out, keeping them fresh. You got three as good as those three, uh, and you can keep them all on the field. Bob Toledo's a, a lucky offensive coordinator to have that depth at the tailback position. And to have the depth happy. Jason Reeves, number 88. Winfred Tubbs really has to step up and take this on, but he's going to step up. And number 44, Detron Smith, the fullback, is able to get in there and get a key block. And now you have Greg Hill running loose in the secondary, and your free safety, Van Malone's making a tackle. Well, the Texas A&M Aggies, 9-1. They are undefeated in conference play. But they need to win this one tonight if they're going to go to the Cotton Bowl. And that is what is at stake, along with Bragg and Rice for a full year against the Texas Longhorns. Yeah, right now, it's the Aggies on top 15 to 9 as we go under six minutes to play third quarter. Ron, that's exactly what I'm talking about. They came right back with the same play. Now watch the fullback, Detron Smith, number 44. He's going to block on number 44, Winford Tubbs. Now Tubbs steps up, meets it, and makes the tackle. That's what he didn't do on the last play. Now he stepped up, takes on the block, and makes the tackle. That's how you shut off the isolation play. Thomas, the fullback in this situation, takes it straight ahead. Watkins has him around the ankle, and he'll stop him at the 45. And if if you're R.C. Slocum, this is just exactly what you want to happen. You want to eat up some clock and also move it down the field and come away with points. And if you're John Makovic on the other side of the field, you have one eye on the field, what's happening, and you're watching that clock move, 443 on the clock, and you want this quarter to end so you can get the wind. Well, look at this. Some adjustments at halftime. I, I would say definitely yes. Comes a blitz by Texas. And he'll get sandwiched. You can see Reeves and Brackens coming up to make the hit. Reed, I should say. They ran right into the blitz in the secondary. Robert Reed, number 40. Look at the top of the screen. Robert Reed working up inside. Now just good penetration by the Texas defense. Tony Brackens, Robert Reed. So it is fourth down to James Bennett with his sixth punt this evening. Michael Adams for Texas. Kick off the side of his foot, but he's kicking with the wind and it's going to take an Aggie roll at the one and into the end zone. Well, the CFA special Friday afternoon tomorrow, number three against number 11. West Virginia travels to Beantown to take on Boston College, and of course, both teams fresh off huge wins last weekend. Uh, the Mountaineers still in the national title hunt, but they got to defeat the Eagles in uh, their backyard this weekend. A huge Big East matchup on ESPN tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern time.
Big defensive stand again by the University of Texas. Near side incomplete. Pinkney's an ad is the closest fellow to it, but uh, not nearly close enough. Lavelle Pinkney's working against Ray Mickens and really has a height advantage. That's 6'5 versus 5'8. But 5'8 Mickens is in great shape in the coverage on Lavelle Pinkney. And that was not a good throw by Shane Lorenz. Hendricks, the junior from San Antonio, comes up to belt him out of bounds. Texas A&M has been so successful on defense under Bob Davey is when you're that successful as they've been and, and you control this league, you become a target because everybody works on your defense. They copy it, people use it, but also you study it continually to try to find a weakness. There's Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator. Two for 12 on third down. AM's own third down. Lorenz breaks away from Adams, trying to run for his life. And finally, he's going to be stopped at the 25 yard line. And he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Sam Adams again. Bob Davey talked about Sam Adams. He said he's so explosive. His first step, he's just on you so quick that he's in the backfield. Davey interviewed for the Baylor job last year when Chuck Reedy was given the post. Bossick's kick, a low line drive. And that thing hits and just dies. And you can tell, although they changed the footballs in the cold evening, that leather just gets so hard. And Bossick's having trouble getting that thing to to pooch it all. He's going to tell his managers, put a heater in that bag with that football before you send it out there. Twenty-six yards and a kick. And the Aggies will take it over at their own 49-yard line. Sam Adams puts on the winter harnessing on the near side. He is one of the four Lombardi finalists along with Derek Brooks of Florida State, Rob Waldrop of Arizona, and Aaron Taylor Big offensive tackle from Notre Dame. Counter trade for the Aggies. And Thomas breaks a tackle and then there's Malone. Good heavens, Malone came and took him with a shoulder high grab that time. Ron, he's just a sure tackler. When he hits you, you're hit. Rodney Thomas will break through the line, and there you see the tackle, the high tackle by Van Malone. Dumps it out in the flat. Nobody's home. Detroit Smith finally stopped at the 29-yard line, and there was nobody from Texas within any close distance at all. What happens on the play is the fullback will slip out in the flat. Here's number 44, Winfred Tubbs, who has to work that way. But the play fake, watch Winfred Tubbs. He gets picked, first of all, by the tight end. Tight end really picks him on the play. Pretty good play call by Texas A&M. The old basketball pick. Mitchell in motion. Comes to Thomas. Brackens down at the bottom of the stack along with Jason Reeves. And he will take it to the 25-yard line. Going to be a gain of five. Texas needs a stop badly to stay in this ball game. Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator, 
The clock now becomes a factor in your thinking, too. There's 58 seconds to go in this third quarter. Longhorns right now, 52 seconds away from getting the wind at their back. Thomas, quick cut. Has five yards and then goes inside the 20. That'll be a first and 10 A&M as Van Malone comes up from the secondary to make the stop. Well, the first thing you think of when Van Malone keeps making tackles, that's problems because you're making those tackles eight yards deep. Dexter Wesley, number 75, the left tackle, really got a big block to spring Rodney Thomas, but you don't like your safeties making, you you calling their names, making their tackles every play. You can see Nothing against you, but I mean, you've got to make the call. Straight ahead with the handoff, and this time the Kevin Watler is there to hit Detron Smith as they get the, the quick handoff to the fullback. He'll have three and a half yards. Texas be happy this clock moves to get to the fourth quarter. See, Malone has got that the ear holes taped up there to keep that cold air out as we're about to head to the final 15 minutes of this one. That'll be the last play of the third quarter. So let's take a timeout with our score. Texas A&M 15 and Texas 9. Texas Longhorn football. Well, let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Ron, they think they've found a weak spot on the right side of the Texas defensive line here. What they want to do, depending on the defensive look they show them, is send their tail back between the guard and the tackle. Also, the indication is if they score, they're going for two once again. Well, that would be the proper call because you'd be ahead 21 to 9 and you want to move up to 14 points, so it would be a two point call. University of Texas in a good defense here, 11 up. And off and Watler in the backfield. Good heavens, he almost took the football from Rodney Thomas. From the snap of the ball, Ron, that was a good call by Leon Fuller because moved up to 11 up defense. What I'm talking about there is you've got all 11 people about five yards away from the football. Kevin Watler just makes the hit in the backfield. And, and the key for this is Corey Pulling needed to get out of this play. Didn't make the call. Texas with a big defensive play now forcing them into third and long. Remember, yeah, Thomas, Thomas is, w did well to hold on to the football. Remember down here the last time the fade route to Tony Harrison or to Brian Mitchell rather. Going the other way. There's a man there. Tipped by Carter and knocked away. Well, Texas played to play perfectly. They scored a touchdown on the fade. So what do you do if you're Texas? You double up both wide receivers. Tony Harrison, number three. You're going to see him work. Now you think he's got the fade. Now watch another defender enter the picture. Number 16, Chris Carter. They wanted to bait him to throw the fade. Chris Carter should have had the interception. Venetulius to attempt a 35-yard field goal. This time, Terry is kicking into the wind. Good pass. Plenty of distance, but you could see it hook off at the last moment, and he is no good. So let's take a break. 14.08 left in the ball game. 15-9, Texas A&M. Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten, glad to have you with us from College Station, Texas. Thanksgiving night, the 100th meeting between these two great universities. And right now it is a lot of precincts reporting to the Aggies on top 15 to 9, and the Horns are still very much in this one. Brown caught for the ankle. Solari got him as he crosses the 25 to the 27 yard line. You made the point to me at breakfast this morning that the longer Texas stayed in this football game, the longer they hung around, the better opportunity that man right there would have of pulling an upset. He's got the shot at the upset. You get to the fourth <laughs> quarter with the wind at your back, you're in pretty good shape. What do you do now, Mike? Best 
Shea Morenz can do is roll to the right. Now they're given formation. They need to get the ball to LaBelle Pinkney and still continue to work Phil Brown. They swing the pass out to Curtis Jackson. He will have the first down as he takes it to the 31-yard line. Here's an interesting number, Mike, as far as the third quarter. A decided advantage to the Aggies, but they don't really get anything as far as points. No score, so they, they possess the football with the wind at their back. No score. Ron, here's an excellent opportunity for John Makovic to roll out Shea Marin's play action to the right side. He's better throwing to his right than he is running to his left. Jackson breaks it. Caught from behind at the 40-yard line. Phil Brown, I beg your pardon, 29 rather than 39. And only a shoestring tackle kept him from going the distance. I think it was Junior White that made the shoestring tackle, but Phil Brown is so dangerous, and he's the player that really has to be the player. You get the ball in his hands. Good block by Dan Neal, the center, but watch. No, I take that back. No, it is going to be number five. What an effort by number five, Junior White. He was down, missed him one time, but able to keep his balance, come back and make play. Look at him. There he misses him. Now watch the man, number five, come back and make the play. Catalog that play by Junior White. That may end up being the play of the game. You're right. It's a gain of 29, and White is the man who's shaken up on the play. Remember the point earlier that Texas A&M has only given up their defense. Two touchdowns this season at home. They have been able to keep people out of the end zone. Ball on the left hand. We still have Shea Morenz rolling to the right side. Bebo's confident, Ron, and looking at him in the end zone. He's down, taking a good view. First and 10 from the 41-yard line of Texas A&M. Middle linebackers show blitz, and again, one of the tight ends comes out of, this, comes out of their stance. This, the other way to solve this problem when you're in a situation like this, it, of course, it negates checking off. But what you can do is come up and go on the first sound where there is no opportunity to move and jump. Jimmy Hakes, the tight end, number 84, is going to jump. There's the movement. There's the penalty. The penalties have really hurt Texas this evening. Penalties in the second half. Aggies have not been penalized. There you see for the ball game. Eight for 47 yards. Counter play will try to run it up inside. Only gain one. It'll be a second down and 14. You have to remember the job that the Texas defense has done tonight because of the 15 points scored. One of those touchdowns came off the 100-yard kick return by McElroy, so it means that the Texas bonded, our defense has held his bonded Aggie offense to only one score in this game. And a solid defensive effort on both sides. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside for LaBelle Pinckney. When Texas A&M decides to blitz, Texas cannot handle the blitz. Sam Adams, number 95. Eric England, number 92. Number 56, Antonio Shorter. No one's being blocked. It's meet at the quarterback time. Now you're third in a long acre here. You got to put the ball up for grabs. You got to try to get Michael Adams or the belt beating down the field. Texas goes shotgun, and a timeout is called by Texas A&M. And we'll take it with them. 11.06 left in the ballgame. Aggies by six. Yeah. 
15 to 9. Texas A&M because of the injury to Junior White they were trying to get an extra defensive back on because of his injury that's the reason they were a man short so they had to use it you're, you're right Ron what they tried to do is that that followed up their nickel scheme because they lost the defensive back and they didn't have the right substitution in Texas now going with a shotgun Shane Rams will get a better look here at least gonna go on top deep looking for Adams and incomplete at the three yard line Donovan Greer, yep, Donovan Greer is the man that's got a hand on it. I would expect John McEvick now the next time they get the football to come back into the shotgun because Shane Rams had a little bit more time to throw through the deep football looking for Mike Adams, number 83, but well covered by Michael Hendricks, number 40, Donovan Greer, number 30, third and long. Tough time to throw the deep ball against A&M with their nickel scheme in. Bosick with the wind at his back stands back at the 35. <laughs> Going to be touched down at the 15 yard line and let's check in with Adrian Karsten who has a special guest from the Cotton Bowl. Special guest indeed, Ron. Mr. Bob Smith who is president of the Cotton Bowl Athletic Association. Bob, you got to be pretty proud of the fact that once again, the representative in your bowl comes down to one of the greatest traditions of college football on Thanksgiving night. Absolutely, Adrian. The Southwest Conference, this just proves how strong they are. And two great teams playing football here tonight. And the Cotton Bowl will be happy to have either team. All right. Who is going to be the other team? There's talk in Notre Dame. And, of course, our game on Saturday, B.C. West Virginia. Who's your best thought at this point? Well, you, you know, West Virginia is undefeated. And so, obviously, we'd like to have an undefeated uh, Big East champion in the Cotton Bowl. But there's other possibilities, too. Several games to play yet. All right, Bob. Future of the coalition. Are we going to see the same thing in years to come here? Is there going to be a change? Well, I, we have one more year on this contract. And I think everybody would have to agree that uh, this is great. Here we are at the last uh, weekend of the season in the four major bowls. Uh, do not have their teams paired up yet. So that's what college football is all about. We're just happy to be a part of it. Cotton Bowl coming up New Year's Day in Dallas, Texas, Ron. All righty, Adrian. Thank you very much. And Mr. Smith? I do not agree with the coalition's working. And also, uh, Hoss Brock for many years, Ron. You know, college football meant a lot to the Cotton Bowl. Uh, he'll be missed. 15 to 9, our score. It's about to go under 10 minutes left to play in the ball game. Pitch comes to the tailback, and Texas is there for the occasion. Brackens and Stoney Clark. Tony Brackens, a defensive lineman, played nose guard in high school. Rex Norris, uh, the defensive line coach, who coached Leroy Salmon, uh, Jerry Ball, some very, Tony Casillo, some very good defensive linemen, thinks that Tony Brackens, number 98, he's only a freshman, 230. He's, Rex Norris says when he puts on 20 pounds and gets up to about 250. He's going to be something. Yeah, he really likes him. He talks about him frequently when uh, when we go to their practices. Mike, you're right. Pull a drill for pass, almost intercepted by Chris Carter. It's a scheme again where Chris Carter, Leon Fuller, sticks him at the free safety and moves him up. And I don't think Corey Pulling uh, is able to find him. Doesn't look like he sees him again. Almost throws a pick. Corey Pulling trying to throw the curl route right through Chris Carter, number 16. Ron, I'll tell you what, 9.23 on the clock. This game is unfolded just like John McAvick would like for it to. They have good field position. Wind is back. A chance to win this game. Adams on the run. No fair catch. He'll return it. Breaks the tackle. Breaks another inside the 35. And let's take a break. 30 yards on the punt and 14 on the return. A one fight song goes in the distance right after another. 15 to 9 as you look at uh, Winford Tubbs. Little game of heart and soul in this one tonight. The Aggies and the Longhorns. So many times they played just this way. Dr. Brown breaks it open, has five, gets to the outside. Will have 10 yards, and now counted off at 11 as Ray Mickens comes up to make the stop. But the Longhorns with a gain of 11 and down to the 24-yard line. Brought the tight end in motion and used him like a pulling guard. He was the trap player, but Bill Brown's so quick when he hits that hole. He stutter steps, stutter steps, and bang. 
right through there for good yardage. Mike, this is the second possession this half that Texas has taken over the football in Aggie territory. Breaking a very big play. It's going to be a gain of about seven. Jackson is the man who comes over one of the Texas Aggies on defense to make the stop. Ron, the little counter play that they had trouble running early in the game. Dwayne Whetstone, number 75, is going to get the key block. He leads around on Jason Atkinson, number 43. And John Makovic did not give up on the counter, stayed with it, and picked up seven yards. Pinkney working in the mismatch against the smaller Mickens, but they go with the running play. Up the middle, close to first down territory, and he will have it at the 11-yard line. Larry Jackson is there defensively for the Texas Aggies, and now let's see on this series if they will continue to run or if the Pinkney mismatch in size will come into play one more time. What gets tough down here against Bob Davies' defense because they just refuse to allow you in that end zone, but... I think you still stay with Phil Brown down here. This is four down territory for you with 7.53 on the clock. This is Phil Brown time. Brown in trouble in the backfield. Going to be knocked down. Antonio Shorter will stop him for the loss back at the 18-yard line. And what a huge defensive play by Texas A&M. Play took too long to develop the counter, but it was a slow counter. Antonio Shorter, number 56, look, he gets up the field. He beats both blocks of John Elmore uh, coming in the tackle. Troy Reamer, he's he's so quick, he got ahead of the block and was able to make the tackle of Phil Brown. Now you think Pete and Ron. I think you're right, and he's lined up against the much smaller Mickens top of your screen. Just got it. The Texas has to block it and get it off. Here comes the blitz. Look in. It's Pinckney at the five. Not enough for the first down. It will be a third down. Texas, and they need about two yards as Mickens had the cover, but there's no way he can cover that big guy. You know who made the play on this? Bill Brown again because they made an adjustment. They moved him up. Now he got the slant because Ray Mickens thought he was going to run the fade. He broke it inside against Mickens, and then he has that big body like J.J. Stokes out of UCLA to shield you. Shane Rams now, hey, he's 20 years old now. He started this game 19. Running play, Brown. Does he have the first down? I don't think so. He's going to be at the two-yard line. He needed the one-and-a-half. Antonio Shorter is the man who tripped him up there's only, along with Tackleman. Ron, there's only one call. It was 6.05 on the clock. You go for the first down if you haven't made it. Didn't get a, make it. Get a measurement. Look at it. Take a timeout and come up with your best play on fourth down because no sense in kicking the field goal now. Timeout, Texas. 6.01 left of the ball game. We'll be right back after this. One of the things that sets Mercury Villager apart from the rest of the minivan crowd is its unique sliding rear seat. For those occasions when you need more room, slide the seat forward. More room? Slide it forward to the middle seat. More room? Remove the middle seat and slide all the way up. And if you still need more room, call Milo. The Mercury Villager. All this and the quality of a Mercury. Okay, Jimmy, ready for your picture with my new Polaroid Captiva? Yeah! No! <laughs> now smile. Gee. Where's the picture? Oh, okay, you can get down now. Oh, where's my picture? I want my picture. I want my picture. Introducing the new Polaroid Captiva. It's sleek, it's stylish. Its pocket-sized pictures stay in a special compartment until you take them out, so you're free to shoot and shoot. I'm next, I'm next, I'm next. The new Polaroid Captiva. Oh. Pick one up for the holidays. 
In the year 23,012 BC, Lenny, the traveling salesman, rented the first big round wheel from Thrifty at a nice small rate. Today, Thrifty Car Rentals still offers historically low rates and now are nice big cars with four wheels. Simply check your phone book for the Thrifty location nearest you. Renting wheels at low prices is nothing new to Thrifty. In fact, we invented it. Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Welcome back. There's the situation. 15 to 9, 601 left. And Mike, this crowd is going to let you know they need a half yard for the first down. They need two and a half for the touchdown. I like to roll out this to this side, the right side with a run pass option by Shane Renz. And the pass on fourth and one, they run a quarterback sneak, but it's too far for a quarterback sneak. And that is, he tosses the interception. They had the run pass option on the rollout. You see Bob Davey with Dennis Allen, number 39. Shane Morenz rolling to the right, trying to fit the ball in to his tight end. Steve Bradley, number 89, but Dennis Allen with the pick. Now it's turned over to Leon Fuller and his defense. Five minutes, 55 seconds left in the ball game. a and by six. And they'll go straight ahead with the running play. Uh, Cliff Gross. Timeouts, a and obviously, they don't care. They don't want to stop the clock. Texas does have two. The big interception by Dennis Allen. And that's the first of the night for Shane Morenz. If they play defense, Ron, they'll be back down here again. Hill breaks it big. Reeves will make the tackle, but Mike, what a huge first down, and he does it with 5.09 left in the ballgame, and... Going to spot it at the 20-yard line. He just wears you down. And the fullbacks, Cliff Gross with the good block. Calvin Collins, number 54, the freshman offensive guard with a good block. Texas has to gamble. They've got to come up with, with an 11-up defensive scheme now because figuring that a and going to run the football, they've got to challenge the run. for Tubbs from his middle linebacking position makes the stop at the 25 yard line. It's interesting Ron you look at the alignment of Chris Carter number 16 the safety he's five yards uh, from the line of scrimmage so they're bunching everybody up to stop the run. 4.23 on the clock. John Makovic with his offensive team going over his two minute drill you telling his team to think you still got two timeouts left. We have time. Okay, stop. Straight ahead, and they're not going to have it. And now look for Texas to use a timeout, as it will be a third down situation. I don't think so, Ron. I think they'll continue to keep it going. They, they need another stop here. If they can stop them here, they're going to get punt. Big, big third down for R.C. Slocum. Leon Fuller looking on. Three of 12 and third down conversions for Texas A&M. 
They need the 30-yard line. And he's going to have the first down. And with that, to the delight of this capacity house of 79,000, that will move the chains, and a huge nail goes in the coffin of the Texas Longhorns with that. Now, Ron, you think of timeouts. Now you have to use your timeouts with 313 on the clock. Now Texas should use both timeouts after they stop the play. Greg Hill was shaken up on the play and has been helped off the field. And that means that Thomas will check in, replacing him at tailback. Thomas to the near sideline, a lot of running room. 50, 40, runs out of bounds. Dibble will say he did not step out of bounds all the way to the 13-yard line. Carter caught him. Really a key block by Kelvin Collins, number 54. The tailback counter play for AM. Remember now, Rodney Thomas hasn't been in a tailback as much. Look at that block by Calvin Collins, 54. Now the fresh Rodney Thomas is able to go down the sideline. Finally, the tackle made by Chris Carter. That's the chance you take when you bunch up at the line of scrimmage. And if they do break a crease, it will be for big yardage. 53 yards in the carry. So with two minutes and 47 seconds left in the ball game. Texas A&M with a first and 10 just outside the Longhorn 13-yard line. Texas has to start using these timeouts with 2.40 on the clock. And let the clock run. I'm sure they'll use one after the next play. came in the ball game because of an injury to Greg Hill and lo and behold he hits you with a 53 yard run Thomas puts a head down and takes it to the seven yard line still pretty surprised Texas is not using the timeout one forty four on the clock and it's moving two tight ends with the third down and Texas A&M needs to take it to the two and a half yard line to keep the drive alive right now they don't really care they just want that clock to run and it is at one twenty eight and now one twenty seven Thomas by the way twelve carries eighty seven yards. Van Malone, one of the first men to come up out of the secondary to make the hit. And we're about to go under one minute left in this ball game. I don't believe he got the first down. He's very close, but I don't think he got it. seconds and the clock is running they're going to go for the first down Texas finally using the timeout well Texas takes the timeout so we'll stay right here and now our Wrangler players of the game first of all for the Texas Longhorns Van Malone 12 tackles eight of those solo and for the Texas Aggies also a defensive player Sam Adams seven tackles three for a loss and he caused all kinds of havoc as far as the Longhorns are concerned tonight so it is 
Malone and Adams are two defensive players of the game by Wrangler, and we say congratulations to those two defensive uh, guys. Ron, this has been a well-coached football game tonight, both sides of the field, and this has been like a rivalry game should be played. Comes down to the final 56 seconds. Both coaches, all you can do is put your team in a position to win. That's what you try to do. And John McAvick has done that on his side. Arson Slocum on his side. You know, the Lone Star blowing briskly over College Station, Texas. Coming up next, Sports Center. Take a look at today's pro action. Everything else that was uh, that was on the calendar. First half, AM and 28 yards rushing. The second yard, second half, 175 yards. A long field goal. Benatulius. Ball is going to be placed out at the 10. Good pass. Ball is down and he's there. And the cotton is flying. Texas A&M was almost a three-touchdown favorite coming into this one, and I don't think anybody from Aggieland thought that it would be until 53 seconds left in the ball game that they would be able to throw their cotton as a sure thing that they will move on to New Year's Day with a 10-1 record and be perfect in the Southwest Conference again, which will be a new record, 23 straight. But it has taken a while. But they go on top 18-9 with 53 ticks left. see the reaction of the players to the winners obviously a different reaction from the far side with Texas but that's what it means to these kids majority of them are youngsters from the Lone Star State and they either grew up together played together played against each other in high school they know each other well recruited by both schools for the most part everybody on these two rosters tonight and that's one of the things that has always made this rivalry so special And Mike, for those that try to kick around the Southwest Conference a little bit, you know, I sat here tonight with with great interest seeing the 79,000 people in 32 degree temperature feel covered with good Texas high school football players playing for two great universities. And I don't think this conference is as far off the beam as a lot of folks might like yeah, to say. I agree, Ron. It's been a well-played football game. Now a late flag comes down. Takes lateral the ball to Adams and then some people squared off and started talking. Well, don't forget tomorrow, number three against number 11, West Virginia against Boston College. Kelsner against Glenn Foley. Huge matchup in the Big East, not just there, but as far as the bowls are concerned, that's an excellent football game. Be sure to join us for that one. It is tomorrow, number three against number 11, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, Boston College and West Virginia. sideline at the 20. Well, as far as win streaks, Texas A&M now takes over the longest one in the conference from Texas, which was uh, at 21. Texas also with a streak 71 through 74 at 19. 
in Arkansas back in the 60s with 16 straight. Speaking of streaks, Miami has a chance against Memphis State Saturday night to tie Alabama for the longest home winning streak. Roderick Walker. He'll be knocked down at the 24 yard line. You can see they say the clock will stay in motion. 28 and down to 27. So R.C. Slocum receiving congratulations on the near sideline. And I don't think R.C. thought that it would be quite this tough tonight, although we did say in the practice field yesterday, Texas has the talent to beat my football team, and most fans don't understand that. The Rams will get out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock with eight ticks left. Ron, remember one thing for Texas fans. Shane Moran's is going to be around for a while. He learned a lot in this ball game tonight. A redshirt freshman. He's going to be around. He'll remember this. He'll remember his experience. And next year, he'll look forward to AM coming to Austin. Corey Pulling, on the other hand, a young quarterback for AM, will return also. They'll wait 365 more days to get another shot. And with that, the clock shows no time. And they say there is one second left in the ball game. Now some of the core on the field and not realizing that there is one tick left. That poor guy they're beating, they have to beat him again, I guess, once the, once the one second goes off. That's one of the yell leaders. <laughs> that poor guy's got to go through it again. Sam Adams down on one knee. Now, Texas goes across the way to confer. We do have one second left in the ball game. To Bob Davies summons his group on the near side of the field. takes the head gear off and starts signing autograph. <laughs> 18 to 9. Texas AM with one second left. Offense. Still a first down. Ron, you're right when you talked about that earlier. An impressive night for the Southwest Conference. Well played football game. and this one is history. Well, that's it from Kyle Field in College Station, Texas with a final score, and an 18 at Texas 9. For Mike Godfrey and Adrian Karsten and our entire ESPN crew, this is Ron Franklin saying good night, everybody. Sports Center is next.